Bonjour, good day. We're now going to uh, start the questions. We have five questions, um, and I would ask media to, uh, to limit their question to one question per media. Just une question par media, s'il vous plaît. The first question is from Campbell Clark, the Globe and Mail. Where is Campbell? Coming to the okay. Minister. Hello. Hello. Um, Secretary Clinton has criticized the absence of uh, three European countries and Aboriginal groups today. She said that significant international discussions on Arctic issues should include those who have legitimate interests in the region. So I wonder if you could tell us how you respond to that criticism. We note that uh, none of your colleagues are with you here at this press conference. And uh, if, it, uh, if you can tell us how this meeting is more than just a, an exclusive club of coastal states divvying up riches in the Arctic Ocean. I think all the participants in this meeting made it. En français aussi. Merci. All the participants in this meeting made a clear distinction between the role of the Arctic Council and the responsibilities of coastal states. Um, this meeting um, was not made to replace um, or undermine the Arctic Council. I think, as a matter of fact, uh, I believe that the deliberations today were very helpful. Uh, to the Arctic Council member states. This forum uh, is uh, not meant uh, to become a permanent institution. And uh, I think all Arctic coastal states have responsibilities to their own citizens. Um, these uh, responsibilities uh, deal with uh, public safety. Uh, I think uh, best, let me give you an example, Campbell, of um, what one of my colleagues stated. Uh, if there is an emergency or if there's a catastrophe, uh, that is, uh, uh, that occurs um, either in the United States, in Russia, or in Canadian sovereign waters, um, they will look to us. Our population will look to us to be able to bring aid to make sure that uh, our Coast Guard uh, officials are there, that uh, we do provide the search and rescue. Those are things that are fundamentally, fundamentally important and fall under the responsibility of the Arctic coastal states. Alors, comme je le disais, il y a quelques instants, As I said a moment ago, all the participants uh, in this meeting were perfectly clear, and there's a need to make a distinction between the role of the Arctic Council and the responsibilities of the coastal states. Today's meeting was not intended to replace the Arctic Council, quite the contrary. I believe we were very clear in saying that that is in no way our colleagues' intention or to make this meeting that we held today something permanent or ongoing. However, there are certain responsibilities and the coastal states have some jurisdiction, states such as Canada, Russia and the United States. And the example I gave in England was if there is a disaster off the coast of one of our countries, it's not a, a non-coastal state that will be providing assistance under those circumstances. It will be the sovereign state uh, that will be providing that assistance. So in that sense, they, uh, the, the, these sovereign coastal states have a very specific responsibility. Minister, with respect to tomorrow's meeting with your G8 colleagues, uh, following the attack on the Moscow Metro this morning, are you concerned that the terrorist issue and those terrorist attacks will perhaps uh, set aside all the other issues on the uh, agenda, including Iran? Well, Danielle, our agenda will move forward as planned, as uh, stated to the press. At the same time, uh, there is an opportunity for colleagues around the table to raise other issues as well. Uh, this is an agenda that can uh, be changed. It's not set in stone, so uh, participants can raise other issues. And in this case, uh, if Secretary Laroff decides to use his uh, speaking time to raise those issues, I wouldn't see any issue with that. Um, I was mentioning uh, this, uh, the agenda for the G8 meeting is not a an agenda that is closed in stone. Fundamentally, it does offer the opportunity to be able to discuss uh, many issues. 
Uh, as you know, we will be discussing issues that deal with the non-proliferation uh, review conference, uh, this, uh, issues that will deal with the Afghan-Pakistan uh, conflict um, and uh, how we can move forward in the border region. Uh, also, we will be discussing uh, the security among vulnerable, vulnerable states, but this will not preclude, for instance, uh, discussions that uh, uh, Secretary Lavrov, or at least Foreign Minister Lavrov, if he so wishes to uh, raise this issue, he will be able to raise this issue. Thank you. I remind media to use the uh, microphone. I'm now calling NRK News, Jan Espen Kroos. I guess he's not here. Um, Rob Gillis, Associated Press. Hi. What do you make of Secretary Clinton's comments that this meeting wasn't inclusive enough and that Sweden and Finland uh, should have been here in Iceland and indigenous groups? I, I think that uh, I addressed that previously. I think that all participants agreed that there is a necessity for this kind of meeting. I gave you an example of, um, of uh, emergency preparedness or if there is a case of search and rescue, it will be the sovereign countries uh, that will be called upon. Um, here again, um, in, in the case of Canada, I uh, have gone out, uh, I've met with representatives from the uh, permanent uh, participants to the Arctic Council. I have spoken to uh, our premiers from the territories. Uh, indeed, uh, I have insisted Denmark uh, that, act, uh, that acts this year as, uh, as chair to the Arctic Council will be present and they will be able to debrief uh, colleagues at the Arctic Council. Um, in, there's, there's no circumstances here where this organization would become permanent. Um, we, uh, we do not want this organization to become permanent. On the contrary, we are all committed to the importance of the Arctic Council. Uh, it does occur, for instance, on, on uh, I'm told, uh, there are other circumstances where other countries do come together. Uh, they do participate uh, as well and are active members in the Arctic Council, um, and there are conferences that take place, uh, and uh, they are done in the, in the full respect of the Arctic Council's jurisdiction, and Canada does respect the Arctic Council. You have to remind, I remind people that uh, Canada was one of the co-founders of the Arctic Council, so uh, we believe in the Arctic Council's role. Do you want to repeat in French or go to the last question? Uh, Est-ce que, je sais pas, est-ce que, uh, ce que je disais simplement, c'est que... Well, what I was saying is simply that... De, de, de la de la as part of the preparations for today's meeting, I spoke last uh, week with a representative uh, of the uh, Permanent Council, uh, the Permanent Arctic avec, Council, and I also spoke to the premiers of the territories to talk about uh, the agenda for the meeting, saying at the same time that following this meeting, they would be given an opportunity to be debriefed on our discussions. And third, as I mentioned, Today, we had the Minister of Justice with us representing D Denmark. We know that Denmark is currently chairing the Arctic Council. Uh, there was also the new Foreign Minister, and they both assured me that they would also be uh, debriefing members of the Arctic Council on our meeting and on our deliberations today. So once again, uh, this uh, meeting is not intended to become something permanent, and the, it certainly was not intended to undermine the work of the Arctic Council. We very much believe in the work carried out by the Arctic Council. In fact, Canada was one of the founding members of that council, and we are very interested in continuing to work with it. Thank you, Thank you very much.